Good morning guys, welcome back. Friday, last day of the week. Hope you guys are looking forward to the weekend. I'm probably gonna go skiing this weekend. It's gonna be good, it's gonna be good. First time of the season. Jess and I are looking forward to it. Corvette, made, made some more progress from last night. So, I've just done all of this section. Um, and I've remounted the handle mechanism and the CPU for the door, whatever you want to call that, the relay control box. Um, and I've also done a bit of cable management as well. So I've managed to do all of this area. Uh, I took off all that ugly foamy stuff that was on the tape on the loom because it was like just leaving this powdery nasty stuff everywhere and it's going to be annoying for the sound deadening. So I took it all off and I actually re-loomed most of the um, loom myself with some electrical tape. And then you can see in certain spots like here, 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 here and mostly over here I've put some dynamite over top of the loom to kind of hold it against the door to prevent any back and forth rattling so that loom's going to be nice and quiet now and I'm very happy with uh, how it's looking it's doing good, oh this piece is coming off though so how do I, how can I stick that bit? that needs to stick down in there the piece just wants to stick, come up and stay up there we go so I've done all of this, done the long strip um, actually, and I've connected up the uh, mechanism and the loom which goes up inside here to the uh, door mech. So I'm actually at the point now where I can do the RTV and screw the baffle that I made yesterday on. <laughs> yeah. I'm just wondering if I need to take a strip off the bottom. I might do real quick. Just because I don't want the, oops, just because I don't want the uh, door card to hit on it. So as I was saying, I think I'm about ready to do this thing. Let's do it. By the way guys, I actually did go ahead last night and paint these black on the outward side just so it looks a bit better. And remember there is a stick of, uh, piece of dynamite on the back side of this as well. And if you guys didn't see yesterday's video, this paint here is like, it's already pre-finished, it's a nice gloss black, so I'm hoping that this is going to be a pretty decent weather protection against any water that's inside this area. So, I'm not concerned about it swelling. Now, getting this in without making a mess. I'm not doing them fully up yet because once I've got them all in, then I redo each one individually tighter. Okay, now that they're all in, what I can do is Go like this, undo each one, push in, and that ensures that each one, the board is pushed in nice and tight. There we go, there's our panel, and the question is do I want to put any more, any more dynamite on this? pretty dead piece of wood. It's not gonna flex is a tiny tiny bit if you push on it. But I don't think I need to to be honest. I could do. I might do that later on to be honest. I'm gonna leave that for now. Otherwise everything else is good to go. So before I go gluing the baffle on, probably need to have wires coming out of here first. I think the baffle should be one of the last things I glue on. <laughs> okay guys I just got a call from the customer. Not giving me the hurry along, just asking how it's going and everything like that. But naturally now that I know he's interested to know the progress, I'm not concerned but I'm like okay I need to start making some progress because I've spent a few days on it now and only really done a stereo and one speaker and one door sort of thing. So what I want to do 
is install the rear speakers. That shouldn't take me bugger all time. Uh, but before I do that, I have to explain to you guys, I think, where I'd like to put the amplifiers. Because otherwise it's going to become plainly obvious when I do the speakers anyway. So might as well get these out of, their, out of their boxes. Put them in the boot. One. Two. I wonder if I should get the crossovers as well. One crossover, and this one is out of its wrapper, but I don't want that. Protect this one since I don't want it to get scratched. So these are the crossovers I was talking about yesterday, guys. Let's put you here. So what my plan for the uh, amps is. Okay, so tell me what you guys think about this. I want to have the amps at the back, uh, the front of the trunk here, possibly like this sort of thing, mounted not sure exactly where yet but on an angle like this they'll have a floor underneath them and i also want to build a beauty panel which will which these will sort of flush push through and you'll see this perimeter here and then the board will meet exactly against this edge and it'll follow down to the floor and follow up to here and stop somewhere nicely um, when I did my design, I did think this was a bit taller. Okay. Where's my amp? Here's my amp layout design. I had, I was going for a few different ones and ultimately decided, here's my first one, build like a pyramid sort of box for them to sit in. And then it was, have them just resting there with like a barrier to protect the front ends. And then I decided I like this design here where they're on a floor and there is a beauty panel which sits flush around the amps and bridges see at the time i thought this piece here was taller but basically it will bridge from a point up here down to the floor and you'll just see these poking through and the question i had for you guys yesterday was should i do the same with the crossovers like have them in the mix as well only thing is vertically they are both taller than the amps, so I think I might not do that now. Unless I went side by side. I could put them in the middle, or just one. One could look cool. Tell me what you guys think in the comments, because I won't be making the panel up today. So um, I do want to put them across the back here. Any suggestions on mounting or uh, design, I am open to suggestion. So what do you think? I could either put the crossover in the door, or I could have them back here with the amps. And I could either have them both on display or maybe just one on display would look quite cool. I'm not sure. But yeah, this is kind of how I want to do them. So now that you guys are kind of in the loop, what I will do now is I will install the rear speakers. I'm going to put some Dacra on in the hole to kind of slow the air inside it down a wee bit and sound deaden the area so that it's not vibrating and flexing. Um, and then I will use speed clips for mounting on the original holes as well as drilling some new holes in the fiberglass here so I can use all eight mounting points of the speaker. See these speakers have eight mounting points. It's not this one, it's the coaxial version of this. And then I'm going to run some wire out of the hole and make both of them long enough to reach all the way over to the other side because I don't know where I'm going to put the four channel yet. I'm either going to put it on the left or the right obviously. This is the mono block, this is the four channel. Don't know. Don't know guys, what do you think? So yeah, that's what I'm going to do now. But hopefully you guys like my design for the uh, amp rack. My idea is that, all, like, I'm hoping that with my design, all of the uh, connections are going to be safe from any damage. Yeah. Okay, there we go guys, back speakers are in. As you saw, I stuck some uh, Dacron in behind them to kind of uh, fill out the gap a wee bit, make it a wee bit less reverby, soften the sound, and it also hopefully will do a, not a huge job, but it might seal this e exit gap a wee bit. Might help just a tiny bit. So there's that gap. 
and over on this one. Um, I had to take the speakers in and out a couple of times because on both speakers I forgot to put a ring of foam tape around the underside of them. Now the Rockford Fosgate speakers do actually come with a foam gasket already stuck onto the back of them, but it doesn't cover these 45 degree holes. And so without it, I was able to see through these and into the cavity. And I just wanted to try and prevent, you know, air flowing out of them if I could. So I stuck another layer of foam tape all the way around it. And yeah, that was the other reason I didn't do eight screws like I said I was going to. Um, these holes actually lined up with nothing. The only, like the hole's quite wide. But it's not going anywhere. It's in there nice and securely. I've angled both of them forwards so that the tweeter is facing forwards. And I've got enough cable coming out here to reach the amps wherever they're gonna go. So they're sorted. Sweet, so now that those uh, rear speakers are done, I'm actually gonna try and get one part of this whole job finished and install the stereo. And I can do that now because our Rockford Fallsgate RCAs have showed up. I've got three of the 10 feet or three meter RF IT-10. So the RF IT series, that's their top of the line, dual twisted pair apparently, and it's um, a braided, if you look there, it's a braided sheath as well so it's very good for resistance to wear and tear and hopefully they're going to be good at resisting noise as well ah see so here we go here's what they they go on about so you've got a twisted pair which is what a lot of rcas are like although some aren't even that some of them are just a coaxial with a core, a core and a sheath going beside it twisted pair is better than that and then these rock and fosgate dual twisted pair they actually twist the uh, cores and then twist the uh, the channels around each other. So it would be really hard to explain the electromagnetism or electric field side of things, but basically all you need to know is that a coiled or a twisted wire is more resistant to interference via noise or anything else coming in, uh, coming across its path. So this is a good thing. So what I'm gonna do is run three sets of these with a remote wire down the center and pop them out the same sort of places where I've got the um, speaker wires there. And once I've done that, the head unit can actually go in. wanted to show you guys before I put the stereo in that I've got everything I need. I've got my harness, my um, RCAs, I've got them like because these are separate cords I just loomed them a wee bit before I uh, put them in and also I've put masking tape around each end of these RCAs. Let me know what ones they are. So we've got rear, front and sub so I know what ones are what. And with the aerial? I need that. That's the aerial there. Cool that's everything. I can put the unit in. Okay, aerial. Okay, harness. RCA is right. Subwoofer. Jeez, these are tough little cookies to plug on. Tough little cookie heads. Come on. Oh, Jesus, these are tight. The uh, shield connections of these RCAs are freaking strong. There's no way these things are going to fall off, that's for sure. Rear. No way, that's front. This is rear, don't get these the wrong way around. Rear right, rear left. Oh, mate. And front, left, there we go. Um, and I might just quickly, there's this 
I don't know what you plug into these to be honest, but these Alpine ones, some of them still have this little bus cable extension thing coming off them. So what I often do is just, once it's all plugged in, loom that to the uh, main harness since it plugs in right below it, just so it's not getting in the way anywhere. I've intentionally left the heater out so it's easy for me to cable manage this stuff and get it all in there properly. The harness tucks down there. By the way, the RCAs coming up, they duck off to the right because there's a few holes out the side of the metal so it's easier for it to go out the right in the space and then they come up and pop up the back. It's done up tight, cool. And now the heater can go back in. And it turns on with accessory. Awesome. And guys, check this out. Boom! Boom, it's working. Oh my god. Ha 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 ha. Right now, I'm about to give a mean shout out to David Talman for the comment on my starting a big project video where I started doing the stereo wiring for this car. Um, a lot of you guys suggested I use a relay or something in regards to how to get the uh, illumination signal. I had thought about not using a relay, that uh, seems a bit over the top to me, but um, we have these things that, that we use in alarms called POSNEX and basically what they do is they take a, uh, they take a permanent, a ground and a switching signal. We have a POSNEG version and a NEG POS version and basically it just switches it from a switching positive to a switching negative. I thought I could have used one of those but I wasn't, to be honest, really that bothered and so you guys suggest a lot of relays and stuff like that. But David Talman, bro, you left a comment that fucking, yeah, awesome. Dark brown at the steering column should be a positive parking light slash illumination circuit if you feel like being a completionist. That is me in a nutshell, man. I am OCD about not completing things. So, dude, thank you so much. I looked down there under the steering column. It took me a few um, tries to find it because, to be honest, when I got down there, to me the colour looked almost like a very light black <laughs> rather than dark brown but I put that down to me being colourblind and in a weird lighting situation but anyway thank you so much dude that is awesome you helped me find the wire didn't need to use a relay didn't need to use a posneg or anything like that or a neg pos so David Talman thank you so much because now I have dimming that's awesome bro also guys, I'm just reading through some of your comments on uh, my most recent video, yesterday's one, in regards to the crossovers. By the way, what does the poll say? Oh, it's very even. Very even between hidden in the door and on display with the amps. But what do you guys, a lot, lot of you guys are commenting about not putting them in the doors because of water. What I would probably do if I did do that, by the way, do they actually even fit? I haven't checked to see if they fit yet. They don't fit. <laughs> So I guess that sort of that, because they don't fit through that hole. It's a trick of the eye. They look, they look like they would fit, but they don't. What I was going to say though, guys, if I did put them inside the uh, doors, what I would probably do is screw it to the back of the board, right? With a piece of, with a plastic bag like this. So I'd, on the board, say this is the board, put it like this screw screw right pull the bag over and then tape it around all the wires and what they would do is essentially put it in its own little waterproof bag it would put it in its own little waterproof bag essentially and um, like you, these things don't get hot so heat is definitely not an issue but I just thought if I was to put them in there that's what I would do I have done in the past and it seems to work fine it keeps them waterproof and if the wires are facing downwards which they would be there'd be no way for water to get through this hole back up past the tape and the wires and into the crossover. So I'm glad you guys are thinking on your feet about the water but I, w I did have a solution for that but I guess I've answered my own question because when I asked you guys I didn't test fit it and <laughs> it doesn't fit. So I guess they're not going in there, they're going at the back. But that's okay because I've got another cool idea which with what I want to do about that. Oh wait, I've already talked to you guys about that in this video, haven't I? I'm thinking 
I really like the idea of putting one in the center between the um, amps rather than putting both on display, just having one, because this is kind of like, one thing I do wish is that this Rockford emblem was turned 45 degrees and I've looked at it and it's recessed in there so I can't just peel it off and turn it. But um, because I thought it'd be quite cool if you had the diamond shape in the middle next to the two rectangular amps, but then the Rockford emblem would be on a 45 degree angle and it wouldn't make sense. So it makes more sense to have it square like that. I think that will look cool, but we'll get around, we'll cross that bridge when we come to it, eh? So, now that I've got the stereo and the heater in, I could probably put some of this dash back together because I don't think there's anything else I need to do under here. Yeah. Before I do that though, let me show you what I've done for wire running. Okay. So I'm pretty proud of myself of this, with, with this little trick, because I've never done this before. But it looks really cool and it probably serves two functions. What I did, I've never done this before, but it seemed to work so well. I plaited the three RCAs and it looks so cool. A, it looks cool. B, it actually shortens the total length a wee bit because each um, RCA takes a, lo a longer path to get where it's going, which is good because I was gonna have excess anyway. What else does it do? It also, you know how I was saying double one twist of wires is good, two twist of wires is better. Well now we've got three sets of dual twisted wires twisted around each other. So this is the ultimate noise rejector. This actually, this uh, method here is very similar to what very professional home audio kits have. Um, like they plait their wire. It's not very common to see a three plait because most things like, like channels and stereo come in twos, either like a two channel or a four channel or a positive and a negative but um, they will plait their signal cables and their speaker cables. If, if you guys have ever heard of Kimber Cable, it's one of the best, most expensive speaker cables in the world that you can get, and it is plaited either um, in a four or an eight um, wire plait like this, because it's well known that coiled or twisted or uh, plaited wire rejects noise. So I think I've just like doubled the noise rejection on these RCAs by doing this little trick, and I want to do it again because I've never done this before, but it works. I think it works really nicely with this um, with this braided uh, RCA as well. Like whereas rubber ones, it would probably I'd feel like I was kind of twisting them and stretching them a wee bit. But this plaited quite nicely because it's more like rope. I don't know if you guys can really tell on camera, but it's like wrapped in nylon. You know, it's wrapped in plaited nylon essentially. So it's like a rope, and uh, goes all the way down there and at the end. I haven't plaited it the whole way because it needs to, they need to go off to their respective amps, but I'll do some more um, later on once I'm you know, locating all this wiring under the amp rack and stuff. But yeah, this is what I've done under here. I actually also did a bunch of work. You may have seen uh, cable managing some of the wires that were already under here, like um, this, this core here and the red slash pink wire that's been run quite poorly is for this little reversing camera screen that he's had installed somewhere else at some point. Um, I just wanted to cable manage it a wee bit better because it was done pretty nastily like it, it just jumped over here and bundled up under the carpet so instead what I've done is I've made it excess run all the way to the end and come back and it's all duct taped down and not going anywhere now because before everything was just sitting here and quite nasty and I also cleaned this up a wee bit as well because there was more of this fuzzy uh, this stuff would have been good sound deadener uh, wrap to begin with but it's one of those ones that over time has just corroded and now it's like sticky nasty fluff so I took that off this and reloomed it so that's what I've done under here I think what I can do is start putting the dash back on I just need to uh, figure out what order things go back in whether this piece goes first or that piece or the dash under there I'll figure it out but I think I can put it back together now because there's nothing else I need to do up here but I think it's probably time for me to have some lunch because I haven't had any it's one o'clock, so it's lunch time. Cool.
Okay, I uh, got it all back together. A couple of hiccups along the way. I started putting it back in kind of in the wrong order. I went this, then that, and then this piece, but I think it, I kind of did it backwards. You're supposed to put this on first, screw it up, and then that piece slots on, and then this slots under it. But that's what's threw me. This definitely goes under that, but you have to kind of put it in like that underneath this one so it kind of confused me a wee bit but I got it back together in the end the other hiccup I had was uh, I didn't realize how little space there actually was in between this surface and the actual floor under it so I had to relocate those RCA's a couple times for it to uh, fit back on but it's all good because it's back on now oh that's where those covers go I can put those back on oh, come here without spilling it all whoa yo I'm gonna put it down here there's one. Oh, that's right it was missing one I think oh no it's not i'm just imagining things those go there one thing i definitely know about corvettes is these mechanisms are so over engineered it's stupid because you just lift it and then you try and go like this but it just does that you have to kind of like pull and lift at the same going down is easy but getting up is like kind of a trick to it you can't just lift it because it locks you have to pull over engineered come on chevy that's just, no, trying too hard. Anyway, it's all good, it's back to get the stereos in and I'm just sticking his uh, reversing camera screen back in. Now, the other thing I did was I tested with Bluetooth to make sure the uh, Bluetooth connection was working in the phone. With the microphone mounted in here, I'm not super happy with it, but uh, it's good enough. I don't think he's gonna be doing too much phone calling in this while he's driving, because the only issue is that any touching or clicking of the stereo or if you actually scratch your finger along here all of that translates into the microphone you can hear it really loudly but for just talking it sounds fine so as long as he's not like tapping this and as long as the car isn't going over gravel while he's <laughs> doing hands-free driving uh, calling it'll, it'll be fine if there was anywhere else i could have put the microphone i don't know where it would probably have to be stuck under the dash somewhere not looking very pretty or hanging down below here i suppose would have been another option or in this gap here if he is having issues with it obviously he'll bring it back and i'll just fix it to a new location but i don't want to take this all apart now just on the odd chance that he might he'll probably he might be happy with it you never know but if he brings it back obviously i'll be happy to change it cool what am i doing now what am i doing now oh i know what i can do i can start running speaker wires for the front doors and i think i've determined that i'm going to have the crossovers in the boot in the trunk with the amps whether they're on display or not yet, I still don't, I still haven't made up my mind. But either way, they're going to be in the same location as the amps, even if they're just hidden under a beauty panel, you know. So what it means I'm going to do is run enough, is run enough wires for the tweeter and the woofer up into the door. Fortunately, these grommets are really awesome because I can literally stick my hand up here and stick my whole... Can you guys see that? It's really dark, I know. I can stick my whole hand in there and move the grommet there's like heaps of gap in there so that's awesome and rather than running two separate bits of wire i'm going to use some multi-core sheathed cable is that 10 amp that is 10 amp okay cool i'm going to use this stuff so this stuff is called trailer cable it's got five cores in it red white, yellow, brown, and green. I've used this many times for speaker wires, and I've never had a lacking in power or sound quality. And the reason I'm telling you guys this is because a wee while ago, maybe a month or two ago, I didn't install using trailer cable for speakers, and there was this one guy, he's blocked from my channel now, because he was just absolutely ripping into me, and not even in an intelligent way. He was just saying all in capitals things like fucking trailer cable is for fucking trailers you fucking idiot why would you use fucking trailer cable for fucking speakers and i got that message on comments on my videos in my youtube messages box on my facebook page in my facebook messengers and we also got an email to work with that same content all the same it's like he copied and pasted it and like sent it to every possible platform he could to try and get through to me. But to be honest, I don't give a fuck. He's blocked now, so what can he do? So, I'm just telling you guys now, I am using what's technically called trailer cable, but it's, this stuff is 10 amp. It's gonna be plenty enough current. I don't know if any speakers even run at 
10 amp because the, amp, the amps themselves have high voltage output. My point being I've used this many times and we've never had a lacking in power or sound quality. And the other thing I can do is I can put, actually put the fifth core in here to ground and, and then the, other, the green core at the other end of the door to ground as well. And what that can kind of do is it puts a ground core all the way through it and actually kind of creates an electric field and a bit of a, uh, a wee bit of a shield. Even though it's not wrapped around it, it's spiraled around it on the inside. Uh, it actually creates a wee bit of a shield. So that's something else I can do to protect against noise. But anyway, just clarifying, I'm using this stuff. If any of you got a problem with that, I'm, I'm only saying this because one guy had an absolute meltdown about it. I'm saying, I'm using this stuff guys, just accept that. It's easy to run, it's A, it, like they're all high, uh, high current, and it's sheathed as well, which means it's really uh, well protected against wear and tear inside the car. That's my little rant on with the job. So the other reason I'm using it is just because like the alternative of two sets of speaker wire to be honest we haven't got anything I, I've been hitting up our suppliers for ages about getting some decent speaker wire and we just don't have any. The stuff that I've used in the back is from old spare stuff none of these bits I don't think are long enough to do um, the woofer cables so I'm using this stuff should I use 15 amp Problem is 15 amps is way too much for the tweeter. If I've got enough 15 amp, maybe I'll use that. That's way thicker. Okay. You know what, guys? Yeah, I'm gonna use the 15 amp because I know there'll be someone out there. Oh, almost dropped it. I know there'll be someone out there who's gonna comment and say 10 amp is not enough to run 100 watts or whatever it is that he unit the amp is putting out. So there you go. I'm using 15 amp core now. And that's 15 amp for the positive, the negative of each speaker, not total. So I need to run it from the center, like where the rear speaker wires are, is. I need to run it across, up and over the lip, down the trough, through the grommet, and to where the speaker speakers are gonna be. Okay, so where do I wanna put the, where's the 10 amp to begin with? Oh, here's the 10 amp, I'll put this back. Yeah, as I was saying, we don't have any nice, like high quality speaker wire in stock to do that with like um the only nice stuff we've got is 18 gauge and that's that's like the sort of gauge you would run off a head unit not off an amp so time lapse <laughs> Okay guys, so most of the wire running is done bar the power wire, which I'm leaving for a day when I'm feeling super confident and upbeat because I know that's just gonna make me wanna kill myself. Got it all coming out the middle here. I've gone ahead and I've made a nice wee slit in the back of the carpet there and made sure everything tucks down nicely so it, and it does. So that's good. It's coming out the place it needs to. The wires are under the doors. There are two things I need to do on this door before it can you know, finally get assembled back together. One is I need to do some test fitting and cutting of the polystyrene on the door card there so that it isn't an issue with this board. The second thing I need to do is uh, put the door card on without the, the Bose grill on it with the baffle mounted here so I can see whereabouts the uh, grill stops because I've got a feeling that the grill on the door card stops about here and so that what that means is I don't want to have the tweeter up so high that it's just facing the back of the door card. I actually may want to have the tweeter down lower, closer to the woofer. So I think I might start looking at doing that now. I'm just trying to decide. Do I want to put a piece on here? I don't think I need to guys. I honestly don't think I need to put any dynamite on here. Because it's already... That's already as dead as it's going to get. Or is it, it's as dead as it needs to be. So I'm going to leave that as it is actually. And I'll start cutting the polystyrene and I'll try to put the door on without the grill in. You guys will see what I mean. Okay, so I'm hoping... If I lay this on here that I should be able to just take this grill off by unbending these tabs. That's my hope anyway. Oops. 
carefully. There we go. There's the metal grill with that piece of black fabric stuff over it. I may or may not take that out yet, I haven't decided. So now, what I need to do is, so now that I've got that out, I need to try and modify this polystyrene. I really need to do this on a table, I think. So as I said in yesterday's video, I need to try and get this piece of polystyrene down level with this one here. I'm pretty sure. Just did a quick measure and I've got this much depth between where this pot meets and where the wood is. So if I put that there, yeah, it's pretty much bang on this level here. Right, so I need to cut this whole raised piece out. Let's have a go at this. This method may or may not work. This is a very easy way to absolutely slice yourself, by the way. Polystyrene, as you cut it, expands, which creates friction, and then you apply more force, but then it slips and you slice yourself open. It's kind of dangerous. That's why you've just got to cut small sections out at a time. There you go, first piece. This will take me a while, so time lapse. Okay, so I got it carved off. I did pretty decent apart from that last, one of the last chunks there, I actually went a wee bit too deep, but that's okay. Too deep is better than too shallow. That's what she said. Anyway, covered in polystyrene. Let's, let's do a test fit and see if this works, eh? What I need to do though is... But you can see what I mean. The, uh, the panel's gonna go all the way up to like here. But the grill stops here. <laughs> Looks like we're gonna work. I think that is all the way on. Sweet. Oh, but this. That's hitting on the wood. So the door panel fits, but now there's wood right here that this is hitting on. Well, let me mark my tweeter hole anyway. Or I could even put it way up here. That might be better, up high. I like that idea. Doesn't have to be in the middle. That makes it kind of further away from the listener as well, which is better. Mark the hole. <sighs> okay, so the wood is all good the whole way around, except for up here. So I need to chamfer that somehow. I wonder if the chamfer bit I've got will be able to do enough. Let me grab it. This is the chamfer bit we got. It's only that big. I guess the only thing I can do is try. Okay, cool. Fixed it guys. I did the chamfer and this pops back in. No worries. And it connects to the plug as well. So the loom, we know the loom works. Cool, so that's all good to go. I'm pretty much ready now, I think, to wire it up and install it and put this door cut back together. Pretty sure. Sweet. Just deciding whether or not I want to use uh, PK screws and speed clips or nuts and bolts for holding the baffle on. I am gonna put a layer of RTV in between the, the fiberglass and the wood to kind of A, soften the connection between the two so it's not rattling and also to like stick it. One hour later. Okay guys, closing out video update as to where I'm at. I've uh, been doing some stuff that is pretty trivial so it wasn't necessary uh, filming. Basically just getting them ready for mounting. I figured out how I want to mount them to the door and I had to sort of adjust them or modify them a wee bit so that they, they can do that. So I decided I wanted to use M6 bolts just because I've got heaps of them and bolts are way stronger than screws bolts and nuts probably better being that the car is fiberglass and threaded screws even with speed clips can like you know strip out so I'm going to use these just because I can and it's like yeah that's why I'm doing it so I had to make up I had to widen out the holes to six millimeters to begin with and then I had to 
make uh, little recesses for them to sit down into since these are quite short ones. I do have some longer ones, but they're like this long and that's just, I didn't want them sticking out that far and I wanted them sticking out a wee bit. So I've recessed all these holes and it just took me a wee bit longer than really what it should have because I spent quite a while trying to find, trying to make these holes big enough for a 10 mil socket to fit into. Because it's all well and good making a hole big enough for this to fit into, but it doesn't mean anything unless you can actually fit the socket into the hole to uh, tighten it up. So that took me a wee bit longer than I expected. But anyway, I did that and this is the one with the chamfer. It's not necessary on the right hand side because the window switch mechanism doesn't come anywhere near as close to this as the driver's one did. I decided in the end just to chamfer the whole corner rather than just that piece. And so yeah, that's the left hand side one, that's the right hand side one. I've drawn out the new holes for the tweeter wires to go through which are wide enough for this uh, big fat crimp to go through and I also plugged the old tweeter holes that I had drilled out with some RTV so that's going to dry overnight and once that's done they will be completely ready to go on the car I can do the driver's one get the woofer in this is the uh, left the right hand side baffle that I still have to you know do all of that stuff but we're getting there we're making progress that's where I'm at guys so yeah not not too bad of a day pretty productive I um, got the stereo in and completely wired up, got the RCAs ran, the speaker wires ran, the rear speakers installed and made a whole lot more progress on the driver's door, completely finished sound editing it and it's almost ready to be put back together. So I think I've had a pretty productive day. So I hope you guys have a good weekend, um, I may or may not do some filming tomorrow because I am here tomorrow but I'm doing a job so it depends on how much free time I get or how quickly I can get that done. But if I don't see you, I'll catch you guys on Monday. Have yourselves a good weekend. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you Monday. Bye, guys.